Excess amino acids derived from dietary proteins and cellular proteins are catabolized in the liver. The ammonia generated in this process is either recycled for biosynthetic pathways or excreted as urea during the urea cycle. In the cytosol of liver cells, amino groups from most amino acids are transferred to alpha ketoglutarate to form glutamate. By the enzyme amino transferase, also known as transaminase, which requires the cofactor pyridoxal phosphate or PLP from vitamin B6. In skeletal muscle, excess amino groups are generally transferred to pyruvate to form alanine. And alanine is transported to the liver by glucose alanine cycle, also known as KO cycle, which I've covered in my previous video. Glutamate, which contains all the amino groups collected from different amino acids indicated by green, is then transported into liver mitochondria where it undergoes oxidative deamination catalyzed by glutamate dehydrogenase, coupling to the reduction of either NAD plus to NADH or NADP plus to NADPH to form alpha ketoglutarate and ammonium ion. The alpha ketoglutarate generated can be used in citric acid cycle glucose biosynthesis or be reconverted back into glutamate by amino transferase, converting oxaloacetate to aspartate. On the other hand, the free ammonia generated by nucleotide degradation and other catabolic processes is combined with glutamate by glutamine synthase to form glutamine, which serves as a non-toxic transport form of ammonia to the liver for processing. In the liver mitochondria, the enzyme glutaminase converts glutamine to glutamate and ammonium ion. The pool of free ammonium ion from glutamate dehydrogenase and glutaminase then combines with bicarbonate produced by mitochondrial respiration to form carbamoyl phosphate in the mitochondrial matrix. This reaction is catalyzed by carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1, abbreviated as CPS1, which is coupled to the hydrolysis of two ATP molecules. Carbamoyl phosphate is now ready to enter the urea cycle. First, carbamoyl phosphate donates its carbamoyl group to ornithine to form citrulline with the release of inorganic phosphate. This reaction is catalyzed by ornithine transcarbamoylase. The subsequent three steps of the urea cycle take place in the cytosol. The second step brings in the second amino group indicated by blue from aspartate, which is condensed with citrulline to form arginosuccinate. This reaction is catalyzed by arginosuccinase synthetase, which hydrolyzes an ATP molecule to AMP, an inorganic pyrophosphate. Arginosuccinase is then cleaved by the enzyme arginosuccinase to form free arginine and fumarate. This is the only reversible step in the urea cycle. The last step of urea cycle involves the cytosolic enzyme arginase, which cleaves arginine to yield urea and ornithine. The urea is then transported to kidney and excreted as urine. The ornithine enters mitochondria to begin a new round of urea cycle. The urea cycle is connected to the citric acid cycle through the aspartate arginine succination, in which amino transferase converts the aspartate generated by arginine succinase synthetase to oxaloacetate, which is then converted to malate by malate dehydrogenase to enter the citric acid cycle. This is part of the malate aspartate cycle mentioned in my previous video, which functions to transport cytosolic NADH into mitochondrial matrix for the electron transport chain of oxidative phosphorylation. The fumarate generated by arginine succinase also enters the citric acid cycle through malate by the enzyme fumarase. Note that aspartate leaves the citric acid cycle for malate aspartate shuttle and urea cycle whereas fumarate and oxaloacetate re-enters the citric acid cycle through malate. The two cycles are connected by arginine succinate. The activity of the urea cycle is regulated at two levels. During prolonged starvation, muscle proteins begin to supply much of the organism's metabolic energy, resulting in an increase in the rates of synthesis of CPS1 and the four urea cycle enzymes in the liver. On a shorter time scale, CPS1 can be allosterically activated by N-acetoglutamate, which is synthesized from acetyl-CoA and glutamate by N-acetoglutamate synthase, which is activated by arginine. People with genetic defects in any enzyme involved in urea formation can result in hyperammonemia, which means high ammonia presence in blood. Ammonia is pretty toxic, therefore hyperammonemia can be life-threatening.